know, only, only, only few people will be able to be very sensitive to the presence of God. Amen. Praise God. Some of you would respond immediately. Some of you would respond a bit late. Everyone have a different way of expressing your emotions in the presence of God. Amen. Praise God. I know the presence of God is here. Amen. And I know the Lord is going to bless each and every one of us. He's, good. He's a God who keeps His word. As it is mentioned in Exodus chapter 20 verse 24. The place where I record my name, there will I come and bless you. We lift up our hands and praise God for the wonderful presence of God here. Jesus be glorified. Hallelujah. Without much delay, we have got time for the children's Sunday school or for the testimony time. We want to give straight time for the word of God. And my brother said, will bring the word of God. Please come in. Thank you, sir. After that, we'll have the Lord's day. Thank you. So, thank you for having us this morning. We are able to come here by the grace of God. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, brethren. Jesus is here, brethren. I'm not rushing anything. Sometimes we need to be still. You know, we need to reverence the presence of God. He's holy. Amen. The Lord is holy, brother. Amen. He's a holy God. Amen. And His heart is to meet with you and me this morning. From His Word, He's been meeting with us through the worship Amen. and prayer time. Amen. And He will meet with us through His Word and He will meet with us at the table. Amen. Amen. We need to be open. What has God put in your hands? What has the Lord put in your hands? What has He given to you? Are you running with it? Are you doing what you've been given to do? Not what someone else has been given to do. What he first gave you at the start. Are you running with it? Or with him? And with what he's put in your hands? Moses. God gave Moses the rod. What has he given to you? Come on. God is asking us, what has he put in your hands? You know what he has done. Have you veered away? Abraham, what God had put in Abraham's hand. Abraham run with what, he didn't have, get everything right, but he run with what God had put in his hands. God was going to give them that baby. God was going to give them that baby. He was going to make sure that that baby was going to be born. I'll come to the word. God was going to make sure that that baby was going to be born. The birth would come, that baby would live, and the, and the purposes and the promises of God would be fulfilled. Abraham was called by God to leave his country. Abraham was a Babylonian, he was a Chaldean. And God called him to leave his people. God has called you to leave this world and its ways and the systems of this world. He's called you to follow him. What have you done? I'll just look at, we look at Abraham and then I'm going to bring um, some things that God's been showing to me. Let us go to Genesis for a minute. Please come with me to Genesis. Let us have a look and see what, Father, what, what the Lord is designed to share with us this morning. Genesis chapter 18.
Genesis chapter 18. And we go back to 17. I'll come back to 17. But um, he says, Mamre is a very um, memorable place. The turban tree, trees at Mamre. Abraham had a lot of experience there. <laughs> Mamre is very important to Abraham. And here God meets him again. God comes. Abraham had a progressive revelation of the purposes of God. As soon as Abraham obeyed God and he began to walk, the scripture says he didn't know where he was going. But God took him to Canaan. He saw the land, he looked around, and then God spoke to him and said, I'm going to give you this land, Abraham, to you and to all your descendants, to your seed, as a possession. And this covenant would be an everlasting covenant. So here we are. Verse 1. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terrible trees at Mamre. I was, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. Are you in the heat of the day of your life? So he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, I have now found favor in your sight. Do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet. Rest yourselves under the tree. And uh, I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that you may pass by Inasmuch as you have come to your servant, they said, Do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of pine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham, notice Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he, he hastened to prepare it. So he took the butter and the milk, the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. There was Abraham. We know Abraham was a prophet. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes he was. <laughs> you, you might have, he was, Abraham was a prophet. Abraham talked with God. That's what the word tells us. Abraham talked with God. God talked to Abraham and he talked to God. He heard the voice of God. And God revealed to him his plans and purposes. So there was Abraham again, an account with God. We know one of those three men were the Lord. Oh yeah. Oh yes, the Lord was there, brethren. Don't look strange. The Lord was there at Mamre. He came. And Abraham was a family. A very hospitable family. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you might say, well, you know, that's how the Eastern people do things. Yes, that's true. That's how they do it. But he was a very, his family was very hospitable. And you see these men were coming in the heat of the day, they were going to be worn out, you know, but they weren't really. But they came and he showed hospitality. He showed hospitality to them. He went, got the, they got the water and they were able to wash their feet. And he said, refresh, refresh yourself, uh, uh, brethren. Don't, uh, you know, just stay a while, stay a while. We want to help you, we want to refresh you and send you on your way. Do we do that? Do we do the do does do you and I do that? Whether it be saints or sinners, are we a hospitable people? 
Do we have hospitable homes where we can administer and show the grace of God? Not just preaching, yes, we, we can preach to what we do. That's what that's so powerful. When we do things and the people just wonder, well, why, why is this man doing that? Why is this? It's the love of God. Very hospitable. Showing God's love. Ministering His grace to the people. And Abraham did that. And they ate. And then we see God began. Uh, they, they asked some questions. Verse 9. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? They said. It wasn't just one. They said. They all said, Where is your wife, Sarah? Mm. So he said, Here in the, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. What's the word? Life. Mm. Life. Mm. According to the time of life, behold, look, watch, take heed, say where your wife shall have a son. Say, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening to the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Listen. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord? Be old also. And then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I surely be a child since I am old? And then God says, Verse 14, Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard? But is this, this uh, verse 10? And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. God will return to you at the appointed time of life. Amen. Our time has not come. Yes, right. Your time hasn't come. Amen. You may think, well, I'm past it. You know, mm -hmm. Brother Abraham. Brother Abraham and Sister Mary, come on. Yes, Brother, Brother Abraham. Yes. yes, I'm referring to Brother Abraham here now. I know this, we're speaking about Abraham in the Bible. But I'm speaking about Brother Abraham and Sister Mary. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You may think that the time is past. Mm. But God will visit you at the time of life. Amen. He has to overlook you. Amen. And your wife, brother, and your family. Amen. And your little son, Joel. Amen. That little prophet of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And your daughter, Jessica, who will be used powerfully by God. Amen. And whatever you do, don't restrain her from doing what God will have her to do. Mm. You may have your plans for her to have a career, etc. But let her be free to obey God and do what He wants her to do. Are you hearing Brother Abraham and Sister Mary? Are you hearing the Word of God? You have your plans, but God says, I have my plans for those children. Long ago I destined them and eternity passed. Father Abraham. Brother Abraham. Amen. No, he, he, he's, he actually is our father. Because he's the father of faith. He's the father of the children of Israel and of, Israel and of the Arabs. But we know he is our father, father of faith. Amen. God said, made it very clear. Listen, Abraham, I'm, I'm preaching prophetically. Mm. Please mm. follow me. Amen. I'm following the scriptures. God hasn't finished with you yet. That's right. Amen. He hasn't finished with you yet. Amen. His plans will be fulfilled as you walk with Him. Amen. As you take each step. Let me tell you something. Abraham took a step at a time. And as Abraham walked with God, when God spoke to Abraham through the previous chapter before, 
He says, he appeared to him says, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be and be perfect as it were. Not in perfect, in per fullness, perfectness as such, a sinless perfection, but to walk before the Lord and to obey him. And as Abraham began to walk, each step at a time, God began to reveal to him his plans and purposes. As Abraham got the first word, he walked on the word. Let me tell you, the word of God was 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 a solid ground. Abraham could run. Abraham could run. He could jump. Abraham could jump. Abraham could jump because he was stepping up onto the word of God, and the word of God will keep him safe. Amen. The word of God will hold him up, Hallelujah. and will keep him to walk in the path. Praise the Lord. The word of God tells us in the Psalms, we know it well. Your word, O oh Lord, is a lamp unto my feet. And I like as we take the step of faith, mm -hmm. and God is calling us to run, mm -hmm. to run with what He's put in our hands. Mm -hmm. What has God put in your hands? Glory yeah. to God. Amen. What has God put in your hands? Stir what God has given to you. Amen. Stir in your heart. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Stir it. Amen. You need to stir it. The day is late. The hour is, is close on us. Mm. The close of the ages is upon us. Yes. Glory to God and Jesus is coming. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world may think they're going to carry on all like this, but it ain't going to come because things are going to happen very quickly. They're already happening. They're already happening. Amen. The word of God cannot be broken. The devil of uh, men cannot stop the word of God from coming to pass. Yes. The host of hell right. can't push back the purposes of God. Amen. God is sovereign and he will fulfill his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will visit you at the time of life. The Lord. Glory to God. He'll give you the strength. He will bring his word to pass. Amen. They will pass it. What God did. He turned the natural order around. Yes. They were past it. Is it? Well, a man is a hundred. Abraham's a hundred years. Mm. His wife is ninety years old. Come on, but this is it's not possible. It isn't. But let me tell you something today. When the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, who then can be saved? What did Jesus say? What did Yeshua say to them? He said, with men, this is, this is impossible. With men, it is impossible. But with God, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Only believe. Praise the Lord. Only believe, brethren. Only believe. Amen. As Jesus said, only believe. Amen. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. Glory to God. We are called to walk by faith and Amen. not by sight. Amen. Glory to God. See, God will use, even if you came this morning in the feel the presence of God, you can't, you know, you didn't really want to worship. So I tell you what, it doesn't change who God is. Mm. He's still here. Yes. But you need to, to, to be in contact with Him. Amen. In union with Him. Touching Him. Worshiping Him, whether you feel it or not, it's not feelings. God may call us, thank God for our feelings, but we don't rely on our feelings. We still pray when we don't feel to pray. We still praise when we don't feel to praise. And the moment you start doing that, before you know it, you, you know you're in the presence of God. And, 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 and the heaviness is gone. And you're just rejoicing Amen. and giving glory to God. Amen. God has called Abraham to walk by faith, and He's called us as children of faith to walk by faith before Him in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The faith is in him and in his word. Yes. Because the word of God cannot change. Yes. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. Let me tell you. I'm not preaching the gospel. God said, it's to you, brethren. I'm speaking the truth to you today. Amen. It's not the people out there who I preach to them. Amen. Yeah. But Jesus said, his words, heaven, the heavens and the earth that we see now, they'll all pass away. But the word of God. No. Who is in you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Amen. The, the, the word of God that's in you. Who's in you? Amen. We need the fire. Amen. Amen. To God. We need the fire. If I tell you, brother, when I was singing that hymn, I was thinking three things God's been speaking to me continually. And I'm, I'm praying it and it's just coming before me. We need, we need 
I need, you need. You need, you, you need the baptism of the fire of the love of God Amen. in your heart, Amen. in your whole being. Amen. You need a fresh, the fresh, the fresh, a fresh encounter with the Holy Ghost. You need a fresh encounter of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And we need, we need a fresh encounter with the baptism of fire of the word of God eating us up. The word of God eating us up. They say passion. He did passion. Jesus said, the zeal of God had consumed it. We, we, the, you and I need the zeal of God to consume us. Amen. To be consumed with the zeal of God. Amen. For him, for himself. Amen. Not for what he does. Mm. But for just for him alone. Just for Jesus alone. Glory yes. to God. So to love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes. A faith. God has called us to walk by faith. As he called Father Abraham. Mm. And there the Sarah laughed. She thought well. Oh, it's, it's beyond you know, this, this can't seem to happen. But God says, yes. Yes, I will do it. I will do it, Abraham. And uh, so uh, they, they continue. In verse 13, Lord, and, Lord said, and Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, I shall surely be a, be a child since I'm old? And God said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I'll return to you according to God's repeating it again. The Holy Ghost is repeating it again. So Abraham gets the message. So that we will get the message. Yeah. At the appointed time, I will return to you in the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. In once the promise will be fulfilled. God will, will come to you at the time of life and his word will be fulfilled. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, Sarah denied and said, uh, I, 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 I didn't laugh. For she was afraid. And he said, no, but you did laugh. You did laugh. And the wonderful thing is, God, Abraham, that walked by faith. Abraham believed God. Abraham trusted God in many ways, but we know they tried to, you know, bring things about, and we still have the trouble today. But despite all that, there's a point where Abraham was saying, "Good Lord, it's going to be Eliezer." God says, "No, Abraham, I'm going to give you that child. It's going to come from your body." It will not be Eliezer. And then there came another time and he said, and he says, Lord, I haven't got any children. What's going to happen? You know, you're giving me all this land, but we've got no children. And then the Lord says, Abraham says, Oh, that is and God says, No, no. No, no. Not your Ishma. Not your Ishma are mine. Not your, I'm putting another way, the Holy Ghost put another way this morning. It's not your Ishma. It's not your Ishmael. God says, my will will be done. Amen. It's the promise. Amen. It's the promise Amen. of the seed that is in you. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. 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 It's the promise of the seed that's in you. Praise the Lord. We'll say, Lord, is it? the Lord says, no, it is not that. It, is, it will be this. My word will be fulfilled at the appointed time. At the appointed time, where we we need in these days to run with the word of God. You need to run with what God has placed in your hand. His word, whatever, whatever you've been given and you've been doing, continue to do it because God will multiply it. Mm. Yes. The Lord will multiply what he spoke within you. Amen. His word is unshakable. He will keep his word. God will keep his promise concerning your life. The promises in the glory. 
The promises he's given to you, he will keep them. He will, he will, he will make sure he's watching to make them to make sure that they'll be fulfilled. Amen. You're not past it. You may have a lot of responsibility to your children, your, your wives and children, and all the responsibility. Yes, there's all them things, but you still have to pursue him. He's got to be the one that your heart is seeking after. And it, and it tells us in, in the Psalms, it says, is it Psalm 25 and verse 14? It says, it, it, it says, the, um, listen, listen, brethren. You might think I'm strange, but hey, listen on, come on, let's listen. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear Him. We the other part, but it's very crucial. Shall be his covenant. Oh, hallelujah. God will show you his covenant. Oh, there it is. Glory to God. There it is. Glory to God. He will show you his cover the covenant in his blood. Oh, glory to God. God made the covenant with Abraham. It was a blood covenant alone. I'm backing up now. Glory to God. The blood covenant and there was god said to abraham you get that that ram that heifer yes. the turtle dove the pigeon yes. and abraham cut a side on each side but he, he, one on each side but he didn't he didn't cut the um the the the, the 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 birds and abraham drove them when the when, when, when the vultures came he drove them away he drove them away and you know what that is? He's speaking about the demonic powers that will try to, to block your blessing, to try to stop you from progressing your God. Come on, come on. It's the demonic powers, and Abraham shooed them away so that they couldn't disturb what, what God was doing in his life and what God was going, was, had promised him that he was going to bring to pass. Praise the Lord. Hey? Praise the Lord. And then he said, when, when the sun came down, I'm just paraphrasing, you, you, you know the story, brethren. Yes. It's not just a story, it's a living reality what took place yes. with Abraham and God. God and Abraham, let's put it right, right around. God and Abraham. Amen. And he fell into a deep sleep. And it says that Abraham, the Lord came like a, in, in, in a fire. He came in a, in a fire. And God, I can't the exact words, but the Lord came as a fire. And he walked through all this, the, the, the sacrifice that was offered to God. And that was God cutting the covenant with Abraham and confirming what he had said to him that he would do. An absolute confirmation that God actually walked through and, and, and made the covenant with Abraham and that he would keep his word. God, even, yes, Abraham failed, but God still kept his word. Glory to God. Sometimes we fail, but God still keeps his word. You might become erratic, but I'm not. That's how I'm, you, you might think I'm erratic. I'm kind of strange. No. As the Holy Spirit anoints me, then people on the street think I'm crazy, but I'm not. I'm for real. We're for real. We're for real. We might be, they might seem strange, but we're not strange. We're, we're normal people because we're being possessed by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. True possession. Not the false possessions of demons and demonic powers that, that press and suppress us and keep us in bondage and tie us up and take our lives away. No, the Holy, the Holy Spirit will free us and loose us to run in the purposes of God. And there are times when you and I need, need to fight and shoo and, and rebuke the enemy and stand our ground and the promises will be fulfilled. Because God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful to His Word. He has never changed. Every word that He spoke to you from the Scriptures that He gave to you, or prophetic words He gave to you, they might not be have been fulfilled yet, but God will bring them to pass. Amen. He has His timings. Amen. But you've got to keep progressing and moving on with what He's been put into your hands. Amen. There are no excuses. For not doing what God has called us to do. Moses made excuses. 
Moses said, you know, he, he couldn't speak, and you know, God said, that, that's no problem for me. It's no problem. If God can use a donkey, come on. If God can use a donkey, mm. how much more can God use you, you and me? Amen. Hey! Yes. Hey! Praise the Lord. God will fulfill His and His covenant. This covenant, I'm not going to say too much because my brother's going to speak on it a bit later. This covenant, God wants us, this, this covenant of love within His blood for you and me to Jesus. Laid it down so that you and I could be restored. He will fulfill, He will reveal the covenant. Deeper depths of the understanding of this covenant that was, has been made with us, that God has cut with you and me through His blood and His life, through His Son to bring salvation. And that salvation is a progressive salvation. It, it, it's so big. That word, it's a, in a small word, but it's, it's ginormous. All that it incorporates and that it means the salvation of God, the covenant relationship, the covenant fellowship, the covenant union, and the covering of God over our lives. Forever, not just for time, but for all eternity. God's secret is with them that fear Him, brethren. Abraham was a man who feared God. Yes, he made mistakes. Yes. He wasn't perfect. We all do. Yes. And our hands go up. But God is gracious. He wants us to learn from our mistakes. Yes. And then push on and be an example unto others. Yes. So, it's always walking by faith. Whether you, you understand or I understand, it don't make no difference. You just do what God says. Mm, right. God doesn't have to tell us, why we should do this or why? No, he doesn't have to. We're the subjects. He is the king. Glory to God. But more than that, he's our Lord. He's our Lord. And our master. And he has every rights over us. Because he has purchased us with his blood. Glory to God. We're his possession forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. We once belonged to the devil, but God has brought us into the kingdom of God and made us children of God. Amen. A blood-washed people. Amen. No accusation, no condemnation, yes. no insinuation, yes. and you're, 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 those things will come on oppression. But the blood has, has dealt with them all once and for all. We keep in the covenant, that covenant relationship and fellowship with Jesus, walking by faith. Believe in God for the impossible. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Our God is big. He's not a tiny little God, you know. He's not. God is. He's just. God is. He is above all. Everything is His. And we've got to realize the one whom we serve and who we're the one whom we're following. He is the Lord. Of all. Lord of all. Amen. Not of some. He's Lord of all. The whole universe and the earth put together. And even things that we can't see with our physical eyes. God is calling us to once in these days, despite of what is happening in the world, to know and be assured in our hearts that Jesus is on the throne. Yes, in heaven, but but more so on the throne of your heart and mind and ruling as Lord and Master. Glory to God. Blessed be His name. Amen. Amen.